Ooh boy, back again with another discography ranking, and this time we got Rush. Woo, holy shit, man. Rush is up there with like my top five favorite bands of all time. They were very important to me in my musical journey, along with Trivium, that helped me move past listening to nothing but Metallica for four goddamn years. So, it only makes sense for me to go through their entire 19 album discography, not 20, uh, as I mentioned in the last video. I guess I was counting feedback, but that don't count. So, without further ado, let's get started. Let's kick it off with... Test for Echo is honestly pretty forgettable. It does have Driven on it though, which is up there with my favorite Rush songs, but that only gives me false hope that the rest of the album is going to be that good. But unfortunately, it is kind of weak. The title track is pretty good too, but honestly, the only time I'm ever going to listen to this again is if I go through their whole discography once again. And you know, this could have been the last Rush album. Thank God it wasn't. Most of Presto just kind of blends into each other. Uh, there's a couple songs I like, you know, like the title track, the pass, and Scars is pretty damn funky. But unfortunately, like Test for Echo, it is pretty forgettable as well. Because it has uh, several tracks that I kind of like on it, it just pushes it a little bit above that one. Hold Your Fire has the same sort of vibes as their other electronic 80s albums like Power Windows and Grace Under Pressure. Yeah, let's see what Josh, let's see what Josh uh, thinks about Hold Your Fire. All right, hold on. Hey, uh, really quick, what do you think about Hold Your Fire by Rush, the album? Oh, uh, shit, put me on a spot like that, homie. Um... Fuck. Uh, I like it. It's good. But it's not as good as the other ones. I agree. Which is why it's at number, uh, 17? 17? Ryan 17? Yeah, 17. Well, you heard it here, folks, from Josh. Yeah. Say what's up to the audience. I'm recording. Recording? Oh, shit. What's up, part of you in the place of East Voice C Snacks? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, C Snacks up in this bitch. Anyway, what was the last thing I said? Uh, I don't know. But overall, it's not nearly as interesting as those albums. Force 10, Time Stand Still, and Lock and Key are some really solid songs, though. Then you got Ty Shan on it, which the band believes it's the worst song. Uh, do I agree? I don't know. Maybe. But, like, there's no one song that sticks out to me is that it's their, their, their worst song. But, overall, okay album, uh, but we're not quite there yet when it comes to the great Rush albums. Alright, so now we get into probably the middle class of the Rush albums, starting with Vapor Trails. Uh, they're all really solid songs. Uh, it's just not my favorite one. However, it does have Ghost Rider, which is, again, one of my personal favorite Rush songs, and perhaps the saddest Rush song of them all, due to the context of it. And Earthshine and Sweet Miracle are also the standouts from it. Uh, and this was a pretty important album for the band's catalog overall. Uh, you know, they came back six years after Test for Echo, after numerous tragedies, and said, no, you know what, we're not done yet. Roll the Bones, I think, is better than I always think it is. By that, I mean, I usually consider it to be pretty low-tier Rush. I mean, it's still in 15th place, but overall, they have a really strong discography, so even though it's this low on the list, it's still a damn good album. You got Dreamline, Bravado, the title track, Ghost of a Chance, and then Where's My Thing, which... You know, all the Rush instrumentals are always on point, and this one is no exception. This is a pretty solid album. Alright, now things are getting really good. 
Fly By Night, the album that introduced the world to the master that is Neil Peart, is again really solid. In fact, I think all the songs are pretty damn good, minus maybe Rivendell and In The End, but this point of the list is where shit gets crazy because from here on out, there's like maybe two or three weak tracks on each album. And, uh, you know, on this one, you got Anthem, the title track, and Bytor and the Snow Dog with that crazy ass drum solo. <sighs> Man, fuck that shit. Alright, so Cress of Bronze is way too overhated. Oh yeah, Cress of Steel, I'm sorry. Uh, they fucked up the album cover. So it's bronze instead of silver. Dicks. But anyway, there's some good stuff on this album. Like the Necromancer is perhaps one of the most underrated Rush songs ever. You got Fountain of Lambeth and Bastille Day, which are also pretty solid. And then you got I Think I'm Going Bald, which is perhaps the goofiest Rush song ever. Uh, and then, you know, Lakeside Park or whatever. But in the end, ne the Necromancer is this album's saving grace. And it's still pretty good stuff. Snakes and Arrows is a very smooth ride. By that I mean I don't think there's really any downtime on this album. Uh, there's a lot of variety, and it's a pretty fun listen overall. This one has a whopping three instrumentals, and they're all pretty kick-ass. Also, again, one of my favorite songs is Working Them Angels, which has a mandolin solo in it, so how can you go wrong? Counterparts, like the previously mentioned Snakes and Arrows, is another great listen. Standouts are Stick It Out, Animate, and Leave That Thing Alone, which... These are some fighting words, but... Leave That Thing Alone is Rush's second best instrumental. What's the first? Well, there's only one right answer. The real fans will know exactly which one, and the fake ass fans are gonna be upset when I tell you what it actually is. But until then, jam on this shit. <laughs> Oh yeah, now we're in the top 10. Their debut album, simply titled Rush, is one that I think a lot of people pass on. It doesn't have Neil, there's no prog epics, but what it do got are some pretty solid rock songs. Every one of them except Here Again and Before and After, I will jam the shit out of any time of the week. Take Yourself a Friend, Finding My Way, Working Man, Need Some Love, and What You're Doing are all super great. In the Mood is another pretty goofy song, considering who's singing it, but man, they got that cowbell in the song, and it again, is a great track. I don't know how the general fan base views the 80s synth-driven albums after removing pictures, but I for one love the shit out of them. More so the first three, and in the middle of those three, you have Grace Under Pressure. Only songs that are weak on it are Kid Gloves and Red Lenses. Red Sector A and Distant Early Morning are my favorites, but all the rest are super great too. 2112 really doesn't need an introduction. One of their most iconic releases, and basically the one that saved them. Lessons is the only one I don't revisit too often, so it's a pretty damn good release. Besides obviously 2112, Something For Nothing is my favorite off the album. I guess it's at number 8, uh, mostly because while it is really good, not all the other songs are my favorites. Seriously dude, these top 10 albums are so damn close, it's really hard to try to rank them because they're all so damn good, but you know, you gotta do it, you gotta do it, they can't all be number 1. Also. Could we stop calling this a concept album? It's not a concept album. Side A is a concept. Side B has nothing to do with side A. 2112 is not a concept album. End of story. A Farewell to Kings has Xanadu and Cygnus X1. That's why it's at number seven. There's a few other reasons. Uh, how about all the other songs are great, except for maybe Madrigal. 
but mostly Xanadu and Sickness. If you know these songs, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not familiar with them, why don't you uh, go ahead and give them a listen? And you'll know exactly why those two songs put this album at number seven. And coming back to our synth albums, we have Signals. Subdivisions is my favorite song of theirs, period. It's really relatable, and it has such a good melody. Then you got tracks like Analog Kid, The Weapon, and Chemistry. Yeah, they made a whole song about chemistry. What a bunch of nerds. Digital Man and Countdown I could do without, but yeah, this is a really, really good album. And coming in at number one is all five of these albums because they're all perfect and I refuse to pick between them. No? I can't do this? Why? Is this cheating? Fine. Fine. Alright, alright. I guess I'll try to rank them individually, but before I do, I just want to preface that I wasn't kidding. All five of these albums are perfect. Each one of them, I love every single song on them. So ranking these is a bitch. But anyway, let's get to number five. Power Windows is Russia's most underrated album, period. This is the one I want more people to hear. If there was a room with like 50 different speakers to create the best surround sound system in the entire world, like in this one room, it is the best sound in the galaxy to listen to music. And I was able to listen to one album. I would pick Power Windows. There are so many soundscapes in every second of this album that if it's like there's always 10 sounds playing at once. It doesn't have the hits, it doesn't have the prog epics, but it does have some songs that sound really damn cool. Territories, Middletown Dreams, and my personal favorite of the album, Mystic Rhythms. Oh my god, it is so damn good. I was so excited for them to play once a song off this album during the R40 tour. R40 tour. Because they were playing, like, their whole, going through the whole career, playing a song, you know, starting from the newest, going down to the bottom. But they didn't play anything off Power Windows. You guys skipped this one, Rush, didn't you? Huh? Yeah, that made me really happy. You guys ready for some more fighting words? Permanent Waves? Free Will is the worst song on here. I mean, it's still good. Like I said, the top five albums are perfect, but Free Will is easily the one I will listen to the least. Because you got other tracks like Spear of the Radio, obviously. Jacob's Ladder with that slow buildup. Entree. Entree Nuaus. Entree No. Enter Night. I don't know how the hell you say that song title, but that one uh, is really happy and really great. Natural Science is a roller coaster of a song. And finally, Different Strings with its mellow, smooth jamming. I think it's pretty easy to see why this is some of their finest work. <laughs> Yo, keep the train rolling on these controversial opinions, man. This time, Hemispheres, The Trees is the weakest song on the album. Yeah, that's right, we don't like the hits around these parts. Only the true fans will be like, Oh, hell yeah, man, it's all about that Cygnus X2, bitch. But the truth is, no. It's not all about Cygnus X2. As a matter of fact, it's all about the single greatest instrumental song of all time. That's right, people. We're talking La Vila Strangiato. Strangiato? La, Vi La Vila Strange Shit. Like I mentioned earlier, like... Yo, Future David, how many minutes ago was it? Yeah, we're looking about uh, seven and a half minutes ago. When I said Leave That Thing Alone was their second best instrumental? Well, this is the first. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's right, motherfuckers. Seriously, though, this is pretty much the the reason that this album is at number three. I mean, you know, it has four tracks on it. Obviously, Cygnus X2 is the grand epic. Uh, the Trees is fine. Circumstances is fine. And then, holy fuck. I cannot stress it enough. If you don't know why this song is so damn good, go listen to it again, man. Especially the last half. And you'll know exactly why. Alright, seriously. What do I even need to say about moving pictures? First of all, you got the three main homies. With Tom Sawyer being having one of the greatest drum fills of all time that anyone who knows music knows it. YYZ being their third best instrumental with its dueling bass and drum fills, and Limelight, a personal reflection from Neil on how it was to be a star. Then the other great tracks like Red Barchetta with its harmonic riffs, The Camera Eye, which is really the last of the Rush epics. Even though two albums ago they said, man, we're done with this shit, and they managed to fit two 10-minute songs on their next two albums. Witch Hunt and its haunting atmosphere, and Vital Signs bring it all in. I would put this right on par with Permanent Waves, but just the songs on this one, I just appeal to me just a little bit more, just a tiny bit more. Which chugs us right along into number one. I wonder what's left. Oh yeah, it's... I mean, yo, I got an entire video dedicated to why Clockwork Angels is so important to me. So, along with being a great final album, it quite literally changed my entire musical taste. I mean, I was already a bit familiar with their catalog before this, but when this dropped, shit was never the same. Seriously, go check out my other video as to why this album is number one. I mean, shit. I even got the book for it. I don't even read. Plus, oh man, the concert. To date, my favorite show I've ever been to. When they busted out that string section, when they played all the songs off of it, where they played almost the entire album, all of them except the BU2Bs, which were my favorite at the time. But nonetheless... You got Caravan, Headlong Flight, The Wreckers, The Garden, which is such a good send-off song. Oh my god. And as my first and only experience with a new Rush album, there is no other way there could be anything else in the number one spot. So yeah, that's going to do it for me today. Next band will definitely be a smaller discography. Uh, I'm not really sure who I'm going to do, you know, it could be really anyone, but uh, I'm going to take a break from these massive catalogs and keep it simple. So I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your top whatever would be, or shit, all 19, fire them away in the comments, but for now, take it easy.